to record to record okay good morning everyone shabbat shalom uh, it's a privilege it's a, a gift for me to be with you and uh, to share the good news yeshua the living torah uh, just a second, the meeting is being recorded. ¿Qué hago acá? Uh, continue. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. ¿Otra vez? ¿A, a dónde está? Pero ¿por qué aparece? Y ahora, ¿por qué aparece you are screen sharing screen? Pero ¿por qué no se borra esto? Acá. Pero después me puede, bueno, ok. Ok, let's continue. Eso, eh, thanks to Elohim because we are here. We are eh, celebrating what it was commanded eh, from the King of King to celebrate Shabbat, to keep Shabbat, the day that he set apart. So thank you for or because Elohim, he is good and his mercy endures forever. So I will start. Thank you, Chris, because you pray for us. You pray for the message. So, so uh, we know that it's not about the instrument. We do what the better we could, but we know that is the word of Elohim. The word of Elohim is like a sword that touch the heart and the mind. So uh, let's receive the word of Elohim. So today we are going to, we keep on with the series, series of the tabernacle as Brother John mentioned. Uh, and now we are in the tabernacle part 30 and the menorah part seven. Nevertheless, I always says, say before to keep going, I will make a short uh, uh, summary of the menorah part uh, from the menorah part one to six. So in the menorah part one, we learned that the menorah was a solid one piece object of pure gold. The gold lampstand was shaped as a central shaft with six branches coming from the sides, three on each, each side. Each branch held a cup in the shape of an almond, almond flower soon to bloom. Each cup had an oil lamp. In the menorah part two, we made the difference between the menorah, the lampstand, versus the Hanukkiah, because it's, it's important to know the difference. The menorah is the lampstand of seven branches, and it was commanded by Elohim, while the Hanukkiah is the nine branches the nine branches, lampstand, and is not in the Torah. In addition, we learned that the number seven is everywhere in the scriptures. For example, the uh, Bible speak about the creation, the seventh day of creation, the week of seven days. Uh, also, the Bible speak uh, uh, about the, uh, the seven trumpets, the seven feasts, the seventh step of the of the tabernacle. After that, then uh, in the uh, we study the uh, the menorah part three, and and then there we study that the number seven speak about purification. We saw this. Uh, in the history of Naaman. Naaman, he was the commander 
of Aran. The only problem with him was that he was successful. He was great. He was very, how we could say, loved by the king, but he was leper. So by the instruction of the prophet, uh, uh, he immersed himself seven times in the uh, Jordan River. And, and immediately he got totally healed. In addition, we said that the menorah of the, of, uh, the seven branches, uh, we said that the menorah of, uh, of seven branches and the goal of the menorah pointed out to Elohim. After that, then in the menorah part four, we learned about the, the malleability of the goal. Like the goal, Elohim is malleable as well on mercy, grace, compassion, love, kindness. After that, we saw uh, that the goal of the menorah teaches us uh, that Elohim is our redeemer. That is because the goal was beaten with hammer. Exactly, it is alludes to Yeshua. The soldiers drove the nails into the hands and feet and feet with a hammer. Just a second, please. Just a second, I apologize. So in the no, in the menorah part five, we study that the menorah watch watches over the table of showbread. We said that a table of showbread represents those who love Elohim, those who keep his Torah, his commandment. The bread also represents uh, the land or the nation of Israel, and also the city of, of Jerusalem as well. Moreover, we saw that Jerusalem is the city of peace from where the one who is the provider of peace will come. Now, in the menorah part six, we made the connection between the letter Shin and Gideon. The letter Shin is the letter that represents El Shaddai. In English, the Almighty. And its numeric value of the letter Shin is 300. So we said that the letter Shin has the shape of a menorah, which point out to Elohim. Actually, Elohim chose only 300 men to fight against the Medianite uh, because it was not Gideon and the 300 men uh, uh, whom would fight against the Medianite. Rather, was El Shaddai, the Almighty, uh, who fought uh, uh, for Israel and he was the one who gave the victory to them. In addition, we made the connection between the letter Shin and the Mesusa. Moreover, we learned that the menorah point to Yeshua. Now, 
let's start with the tabernacle part 30 and the menorah part seven. And in this part, uh, we are going to see that the menorah speak about Yeshua and us or Yeshua with us. Uh, you see the, the menorah there, <laughs> I hope. Uh, I just a second, I try to move that. Uh, I always try to not make mistakes, to not, to not uh, uh, bother the screen. So, so the menorah point, we is, uh, learned that is uh, point to Elohim, point to Yeshua, but this time the menorah point also to Yeshua with us and us. So how come? How come we have the menorah, the main shaft, and the six other branches? So to understand that, let's continue to study the different part and characteristic of the menorah of gold, and we will see that it's a prophetic shadow about Yeshua and us. Before we define already that no. the middle shaft, what you have there in the middle of the menorah, uh, uh, the middle branch, that is to say the, the shaft, the yarek, which uh, it represents and it's, it's, it's called the servant is, is specifically Yeshua, Revelation 1.13. That we learned uh, last message in the midst of the menorot, I saw one like the son of man clothed in a robe down to his feet with a golden belt wrapped around his chest. While, while, you know, the middle is Yeshua, while, but what is the other six? The other six branches is, uh, speaks about us. Who? The human being. Why? Because six in Hebrew is the letter Vav, and the letter Vav, six, is all the time about the human being. And uh, that, uh, as we have learned, learned, uh, before in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 31. Then Elohim says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea. And when we go to the verse 31, says, uh, says, uh, says, Elohim, uh, Elohim saw the, uh, and it so there was evening. Okay, everything that he made, and I will read all the, the verse, it's gonna be easier. Uh, let them rule over the fish of, of the sea, over the flying creature of the sky, over the livestock, over the whole earth, and over every crawling creature that crawls on the land. So Elohim saw everything that he made and behold, it was very good. Was excellent, was perfect. So there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Elohim, he created the man the sixth day. That's why six uh, point to the human being, to us. So now uh, let focus our, our uh, fix our gaze on the menorah. When we see the menorah carefully, it looks like surrender people raising hands to Yeshua, their maker. Yeshua is the middle shaft and the other, pe and the other branches 
represent us. So I, I don't know if I have a lot of imagination, but, but <laughs> everything I see Yeshua everywhere. So, so uh, uh, why I say the, uh, the maker? Why? Because Elohim, he said in the beginning that he will dwell among us and in us and with us and inner us. And we know and we learned that Elohim, he is Yeshua. He is the Messiah. Uh, so uh, when we read in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, the scripture says, he is who he is, Yeshua. He is the image, image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on her, earth. This, the seen and the unseen, whether thrones or angelic powers or rulers or authorities, all was created through him and for him. Many people would say, oh, I thought it was Elohim who created everything. Yeshua is Elohim. Yeshua is the, the, uh, the visible appearance of Elohim. He is the image as uh, the scripture says. He is himself Elohim. So now we are going to see, uh, we, we are going to see that the menorah speak about, uh, about Yeshua and us through the fact that the menorah was made of gold. First, the goal is incorruptible. The Bible says that Yeshua led, he lived a sinless, a sinless life. He was flawless, he was perfect, he had no sin. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Oh. I try to I try to change my screen and I cannot. I don't know what happened. Uh, I try to change just a second, please. Thank you to be patient. Uh, I cannot change, just a second, please. Okay. okay. Uh, Oh, okay. Thank you to be patient. So uh, we said that uh, that uh, in in the Second Corinthians five twenty one says he made the one who knew no sin to become a sin offering on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So Yeshua had no sin. The gold is incorruptible. Yeshua is that gold of the menorah. The uh, point B is the gold does not rust. Yeshua, he was three days and three nights uh, in the grave. And after that, he raised from the death. And now, and know, and we know that uh, someone, when he died, passed away. After the third day, his body start to be decomposed and to decay. 
but not for Yeshua. He raised at uh, 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 exactly in the good moment. His body was not decomposed. Uh, in the book of uh, Act, chapter two, Okay, chapter 2, 24 says, but God raises him up, releasing him from the pain of death, since it was impossible for him to be held by it, because you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see decay. This word, uh, is a Peter who was uh, making reference to the book of Psalms when David, he speak about the Messiah, uh, about the Messiah. So he's taking the same words of David and after he says, uh, uh, he says that, uh, that uh, the Messiah will die, but he will not see decay. So the third point about the goal, goal of the menorah is that the goal is durable. The scripture says that Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is in Hebrew, in the book of Hebrew, uh, chapter 13, verse 8. Now, but now, what about us? So because we are part of the menorah, the six branches, and we are one with the shaft, the servant, uh, we belong to the to the shaft. We uh, uh, and we are one with the shaft. And Yeshua is this shaft, the Yarek, the main shaft. So as well, we are going to live forever. Yeshua, he died, passed away once, and after that, he raised from death to live forever. As the the in and to reign uh, uh, forever, in the book of Corinthians chapter two, to uh, a, a book of Second Corinthians chapter four, uh, uh, sixteen says. Okay, uh, therefore we do not lose heart through our outward man is decaying, decaying. Yet our, our inward man is renewed day by day for our troubles light and momentary is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. So you are going to say, yeah, but our body is uh, decaying, decaying. Yeah, the body, but our inter inner being, it's new every day. That means never will die, will remain forever. So the second point, that the menorah point out to Yeshua and us is through the fact that the menorah is a one piece object. The word of Elohim says, oh no, just, I have, okay, otra vez, just a second. Okay. The word of Elohim says that the buds and branches shall all be of one piece with the lamb stand. This is in Exodus 25, 36. The six branches, we repeat many times, are representing us 
And the Jarek, the chaff, is Yeshua, the servant. Actually, we could see on the menorah the will and the desire of Yeshua to be one with us, like he is a had with Elohim. When the scripture says that he is a had with Elohim, that means that he is Elohim. He is the representation of Elohim. He is the image. He is Elohim. He is what we could see of, uh, uh, of Elohim. And Elohim and Yeshua, he wants to be the center of our life. He wants to be with us, but he wants to be the center of our life. All our life must to, to be set or turn around uh, on Yeshua. In the book of John, chapter 17, verse 20 and 23 says, I pray not on behalf of this only, but also for those who believe in me through their message. In them, uh, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity so that the world, world may know that you sent me and love them as you love me. In this chapter, you, you are going to see that he repeat many times that he want that we become one with him as he is one with Elohim. So that means that with him, uh, uh, we, are, we, we are one. So because now, because we are one with Yeshua, it is exactly according to the menorah I apologize. I had a, uh, all the branches. I say that uh, all, uh, because we are one with Yeshua and it is exactly according to the menorah. All the branch are one with the chaff, Yeshua. Then that is to say that now in Yeshua, we are the same family. We are the same people. Uh, we have the same father. We have the same king. Before to come to Yeshua, we were, we were what is written in Romans, in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 17, 25, and 20, uh, 26. What says in Romans 11, he says that before, before to meet Yeshua, or better is to say, before Yeshua met us, <laughs> because he came to our life, uh, he chose us. So before he came to our, our life, we were not people, his people. We had not. Uh, uh, the citizen of Israel, but now because we uh, because we are in Yeshua with Yeshua, now uh, he, Yeshua he grafted uh, us into his family. In fact, we are now from now from the day that we uh, we uh, we met Yeshua. Yeshua met us. We are not two people or two different family. Before we used to say, and we heard it many times, uh, and we say it, we are Gentiles. And the Israelite people, Israel and the Gentiles. It looked like a, a, in the eternal life will be like a, the half of the kingdom, for the for Israel and the half of the kingdom, there is gonna be a wall for the Gentiles. Or many, but the, it is not what the scripture says. The scripture says that 
now we are one. It's not about uh, of Jew and Gentile, it's about that we are the Israel family. Obviously, the house of Israel with the house of Judah uh, uh, together become the family of Israel, become one people, one nation, the chosen one, the bride of Yeshua. We could see it in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 15 and 16, 17, 18, 19. And when the scripture says, the word of Elohim of Adonai came to me saying, you son of man, take one stick and write on it for Judah, for uh, Bine Israel joined with him. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of, of Ephraim and all the house of Israel join with him. Join them one to another for yourself as one a stick so they may become one in your hands. When the children of your people I speak to you saying, won't you tell us what you mean by this? Say to them, thus says Adonai Elohim, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribe of Israel join it with him. And I will put them together with the stick of Judah and make them one stick. They will be one in my hands. They will be a menorah. You see the stick to a stick look like the, the, the stick of our branches. It uh, look like uh, branches, like menorah. So it's become one. So we are Israel. It's not possible that we follow and we obey uh, the Elohim of Israel and Yeshua is our king. He is Elohim and we are two people, different people. Those in men sense we are what is written in the scripture and we must to be, believe it because it is so. This is what his Elohim says to Abraham. The menorah, what was the purpose to the menorah? The menorah's purpose was to give light. It's not only decoration, no, was, was amazing, was beautiful, was, uh, Wow, was was uh, was great, but the purpose was to make to give light. In fact, we could have the apparatus. You could see the uh, the the menorah. We could have the tool. We could have we could have uh, the wick. We could have we could we could have fire but separated but if we don't have the fuel we are not going to be able to maintain or to keep the light so the menorah uh, speaks about yeshua and us uh, through the menorah's fuel. This is the other point. Now the question is, where does the oil for lighting come from? The oil came from the Israelite, uh, from the Israelite. They brought it as an offering to Elohim. The people after Elohim commanded it, the people gave, brought oil, uh, 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 pure quality, olive oil, and they gave voluntarily and freely. Exodus 20, 25, verse one, two and six. Exodus 
Adonai spoke to Moses saying, tell Bnei Israel to take up an offering for me from anyone whose heart compels him, you are to take my offerings, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. When we take a little time, we see that uh, he commanded, but to those who was willing to do it, who those who were prompt to, to give. People, some people, uh, people were not um, obligated, but people gave as offerings. So was offerings was not obligation and people they offered. So this oil was a pure, the most quality oil and was put in the lamps of the menorah with a purpose to keep the lamp uh, burning. But now let's back to the shaft, to the main, uh, to the servant, to the yarek, the main, uh, the shaft, the middle. The shaft middle is Yeshua. And when we come to the scriptures, Yeshua, he came with a purpose. He came to die. And but before, before to die, before to be crucified, fight, he, he knew him, he knew already because he is Elohim. He knew that he came to die. He went out as usual to the Mount of Olive. And the scripture says that his disciple followed him. In the book of Luke 22, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 22, verse 38, we read, Yeshua came out and went as usual to the Mount of Olive, and the disciple followed him. Mark 14, 32. Then they come to a place whose name is Gethsemane. And Yeshua says to his disciple, sit here while I pray. The Mount of Olive is the Getseman, is the same. In Hebrew, uh, in Hebrew, Getseman or the Mount of uh, Olive is Getsemanim, which means oil press. For the garden was a grove of olive trees in which was located an oil press. I will say the same thing in, in other words. By the way, in the Mount of Olive, there was olive trees. Trees, the trees have olive fruit. And if there is olive fruit, there is an olive press. It's just normal. And the olive press was on the lower pl place of the garden. People carried the olive uh, fruit uh, uh, from up to down because it, it is the way, it's more easy. That's why the olive press was located in the lower place. People will not climb to go up with uh, with the heavy weight. No, it's the opposite. So uh, to make oil, the olive was piled, uh, break and grind. They put different level, they pile. And after a while, one, two, three, four, five days, the liquid that get out only by natural pressure from the flesh of the olive, 
this liquid that uh, get out only by natural pressure, only by the weight of the hip of olive was the first fruit or the oil that we call virgin, the oil of the first quality. This oil, the first quality, the virgin, uh, it was given to the temple and to the synagogues. It was given only the third part to the temple and synagogues. It was given uh, as a offering to Elohim. After the first, uh, uh, when they have taken the first oil, the first quality, the people turn it, the crank, to make a external pressure. They, they press, press. And they did it once, two times, three times, uh, to get the maximum on oil, to get the even till the last drop of oil. But let uh, uh, we need to bear in mind that that oil was the second quality because was uh, um, was produced was got from external uh, 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 external uh, uh, pressure. Now, when we look Yeshua, concerning Yeshua, Yeshua, knowing that he was, he came to die, and knowing that the time was uh, uh, at, at, uh, at hand, what uh, uh, near, he decided himself to come as usual to the Gethsemane. Gets a man. He chose voluntarily to offer his life as an uh, as an offering to Elohim before the temple. In the book of Mark, chapter 14, 35 and 6, it is written. Go uh, going a little farther, he fell to the ground and began praying that is began praying he said that if, if possible this hour might pass him by and he was saying abba father all things are possible for you take this cup from me yet not what i will but what you will. All the scripture is uh, intertwined, is has a thread, is link, cup, you know the cup where we put the oil, and uh, and uh, what happened there? What what happened? Why Yeshua, when he was praying, he was offering, uh, uh, was giving a, a voluntary offering, offering a voluntary offering, offering, and this was the first fruit. It was uh, the the uh, the first fruit that he decided himself. No one made a pressure on him. It was a natural pressure. How come? Because the scripture says that when he was praying, uh, uh, there was, uh, his sweat was like a, a drop, drop of blood uh, falling on the ground. 
we could read uh, in Luke 20, 22, chapter 42, 43, 44, you see that the sweat like blood was no one hit him, but because he was already in anguish, he was afflicted, he, he, he start to suffer. And then the olive fruit, the flesh that he is compared to the olive uh, fruit, the flesh start to produce this olive oil, this offering to Elohim. Uh, Luke 22, 42, we are going to read. This saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet no my will, but you'll be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and it in his anguish he was praying fervently, fervently, and his sweat was like drop of blood falling down on the ground. After we know, after he finished to pray, or after that, we know that uh, the disciples, they were sleeping, they fall, fell asleep, asleep, and the soldiers came to, to take Yeshua. And then uh, continues the, the oil, the, 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 the olive fruit, the flesh, to uh, to be pressed. The soldiers start to mock on, on him. The soldiers start to flog him, start to, to beat him, to start to strike him. They put a crown of thorns. The, 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 the soldiers spit on him, and after that, uh, he was nailed. He was crucified. So, but this time, uh, and then Yeshua, he gave, he offered uh, 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 his blood. He offered his blood until the last drop. As same as the olive oil, as the flesh of olive Now, there is Yeshua, the middle child. But what about us? We are the six other branches connected and one with Yeshua, with the servant. We also, as well, we need to give our entire life to Yeshua as an offering voluntarily. Yeshua, he didn't uh, kept anything for him. He gave completely uh, to us. He died. He didn't reserve anything for him. As well, we must to give and our life must to be as a full offering. It's not, it must to give an offering has to be something that comes from our heart. We must to be prompt to offer our life to him. And other thing that we must to do as like the other six branches is that we need all the time, every day, we need to add oil to the lamp of our life. If we want to see our lamp burning, if we want to see our life burning with the fire, with the light of Yeshua, uh, we, we must to take the oil that comes from the word of Elohim. We must to proclaim 
Yeshua. We must to share Yeshua. We must to take time reading the scriptures. We need to study the scripture. We need to spend time to praying. And we may, must to do what Yeshua said. If you are here, bless those who are here and those who are, are uh, obedient, those who hear and obey my word. We must obey the word. Then we are going to burn and give light. If we feel that our life is starting to, 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 to lose the flame, to, uh, to quench, to, to uh, we are, uh, if we feel that we are uh, start to, we, uh, to be weak, our flame is not giving enough light. The flame is not uh, alive completely. We don't have to be, uh, to have a scare. We don't have to, to, to be discouraged. Yeshua, he said in his word that he will not reject us. He knows that we are human. He says that he will not uh, say, oh, this person is weak. His person is passing by a difficult time. His flame is down, so I will turn off his flame. No, Yeshua, he is faithful. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 3 says, says, and he, this scripture is about Yeshua, the Messiah. And it is written like that, a bruised reed, he will not break. So if you feel that the tempest of life, the circumstances of life uh, is uh, if, uh, uh, break you like a reed and you, you are like shaking, uh, Yeshua, he will not break you. He will restore you. And the scriptures continue to saying, and a smoldering wick, he will not snuff out. So if you scarcely, uh, you are uh, just giving a, a smoke, it's like uh, almost dying, Yeshua, he, is gonna lift you. What you what we need to do is to add oil. Take, take the word, obey the word, start to pray, start to recover the first love, and start to do what let us start to do what we we uh, did in the first when we met Yeshua. We spent time with him. So, uh, so uh, the other point that the menorah speak about Yeshua and us is that the menorah bore, burned continually. I will see the time, okay. I think I have time, yeah, exactly. So, the menorah burned continually. We have the verse in Exodus 27, 20, 21, and the chapter 27, verse 20 and 21, where Elohim, where Elohim command, commands to bring olive oil so that the lamp may be kept burning. Then we have two other scriptures where we find apparently a contradiction. We know that in the scriptures, that we know that in the word of Elohim, there is no contradiction. What we have is misunderstanding. If we don't understand a scripture, we need to continue. And we are going to see that, that, that the scripture, the word of Elohim is perfect. In the first uh, menorah, part of the menorah, I said that, that the menorah must remain uh, uh, burning 
exactly as it is written in the scriptures in Exodus 27. But I said that the other scripture said that the menor, we, uh, the priest must to, must to tend the menorah. He must to light the menorah at evening, at evening, in the evening. Oh, exactly when the, the night starts. But when the night starts, we know that is the beginning of a new day. So look like, oh, now I say, oh, what's going on now? It is really that the menorah burns continually or just continually only on the night, during the night? Or, or all the time, never stop, day and night? And the scriptures, all the answers are on the scriptures. So, so uh, we are going to read uh, Exodus. Looks okay. We are going to we are we are going to see the the PowerPoint. The okay, burn confirming. Leviticus 24, 2, command is related to bring you clear oil or press olive for the light so that the lamb may be kept burning continually. Exodus 30, verse 7, 8 says, Aaron must burn sweet spices of incense there every morning. When he attend to, to the lamb, he is to burn it. Also, when Aaron kept the lamp lit, at dusk, at dusk, he must burn it. There must be incense continually before Adonai throughout your generation. Every morning. Uh, so in the morning, the lamp were, uh, were turned off in the morning because the priest came to attend the lamb. So, but, but we know also that the middle shaft, the Yarek, is Yeshua. So I, I am wondering, or I have a question, does Yeshua, he, he, he is, or he turned off himself once a while? Yeshua, he walked in darkness once a while? Uh, or, Je or Yeshua, he need to light himself uh, uh, during, in the evening? Yeshua, the, the scripture says that in his word, says that, Yeshua, he is the light. And Yeshua, and in Yeshua, there is no darkness in him. So because he is the light, he is always, is just normal. It makes sense. Yeshua, the middle shaft, he always, always permanent. He is burning in the book of John, Chapter 1, 9, 9 says, the true light, light is light. He always, he is light. He always, he's burning. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Who is everyone? The human being. Who is everyone? The other six branches. So the middle shaft represent Yeshua, and it is mean that the Yarek never was turning off. It was always burning continually like Yeshua. Every evening, every evening, uh, the priest took fire from the Yarek, from the middle shaft, and light the other branches, the other lamp. So 
uh, that is why we, we have two different uh, um, two different uh, scriptures that in the evening and in the day, morning we stop and we need to take care of the lamp. So so even in the traditional uh, in the tra traditional uh, Jew traditional in the tradition Jew tradition in the Talmud makes sense. They uh, they said that the Yarek the middle was always burning. Exactly what the scripture says. We don't follow the Talmud. And the answer is in the scriptures. But it's good to know that uh, <laughs> because it's history. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a good book it's about history. So now, what about us? Because the Yarek was burning, burning continually. And uh, uh, and, uh, and the other lamp was turning off every morning. The priest came all the time and take care and tend the lamp. What, how he, 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 he tend the lamp? He had to trim the wick, the wicks, the wick with the wick trimmer, with the tongue. Because uh, many times the wick after uh, after burning after burning the wick were bent the uh, uh, the wick uh, were bent and uh, and uh, and uh, the the when is bent that prevent that hinder uh, the light to. Uh, take the the same level of the other one. They hinder the light or the flame to have the same the same uh, uh, grow the same uh, high. So the priest took the tongue and need to to trim the wick to maintain the flame alive. And he did for the six, uh, for the six, and even for the middle. But the other six was turned off. And and we know that the tongue, the trimmer uh, wick, was made of gold. Why made of gold? Because it's about Elohim, the only one who could trim our life, our heart is Elohim, is his word. Yeshua, being Elohim, is the only one who could change our heart, work in our heart, the only one with his word. So in our life, sometimes our flame is not really alive. We need uh, to be dream. We need that, uh, that our, our weak, our weak, because we are compared to the weak, our life is compared to the weak, our life is compared to the, you know, uh, like a, a candle. So the weak, our weak need to be trim, trim, to revive the flame. How Elohim does that? Elohim, he is the highest priest. He does through his word. Sometimes, is very painful, but is mandatory. If we want to keep our, our flame alive, same as, like the other one, same as Elohim he wants, we must to be, be trim. Uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter six, verse five, uh, the scripture says that that uh, that uh, in that moment Isaiah uh, saw Elohim in a vision. 
and he start to and uh, to cry out. He says, "Oh, miserable of me! I saw the king, highly, the great king. So um, I impure man with impure lips. I will die." So a uh, seraphim uh, flew uh, uh, to him and took live charcoal f uh, with the tongue uh, from the altar and he put in the lips of, of Isaiah. And he said that because the uh, charcoal, li live charcoal touched his lip, he become uh, pure, he become uh, 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 righteous, he become, he will not die. He will, he was declared just. So only to say that there is nothing uh, without value in the word of Elohim. All the details, I, I repeat all the time, all the details are connected with Yeshua, the King Elohim himself. So it's important, let take the tongue from the hands of the pre high priest, the tongue, the, uh, the 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 extremer week is the word of Elohim. It's gonna be painful when he, when Elohim is gonna talk to us. Uh, he we are going to see our condition, and when we are going to obey, we are going to uh, uh, we are going to be restored. So it's almost finished. The, old, the other lamp were lit every morning, every evening from the main central branch, the Yarek, who is Yeshua, as I said before. And uh, it is exactly what happened to us. Yeshua came to our life when we were in darkness, when it was night. Uh, he lit the lamp of our life, and then uh, we pass from darkness to his li light. Our life starts when we were conceived, and since we were conceived, was darkness. Why? Because we had the sin with, uh, we was born, or and we were conceived with, with the sin. So because our forefathers, Adam and Eve, and we were living a life uh, with a Yeshua in darkness. When Yeshua came to us, he lit our lamp. And now from that moment, we start to walk with Yeshua in the light of Yeshua. In the book of Romans 13, 12, 14 says, the night is almost gone and the day is near. So let, let us put off the work, work of darkness and put, put on the armor of light. Instead put on the Lord Messiah Yeshua and stop making provision for the flesh for its craving. So, uh, uh, we are still the world what we live is in darkness so since Yeshua come before the millennium uh, is the night everywhere we go everywhere we stand but there is light in us through Yeshua So it is all for today. For con to conclude, we learned that the menorah speaks about Yeshua and us. Concerning the gold, the gold is incorruptible, does, does not rust, and is durable. And we said also that the menorah is a one piece object. Also, we said that the menorah. Uh, uh, needs oil. After that, we said that uh, that 
the menorah burns continually. So, shalom, everyone. We now we are going to uh, 